I'm glad that was the introduction. We all know the story of Zacchaeus and, uh, and uh, the text we have uh, today for us is uh, Luke chapter 19 and verses 10. The background of this is the story of Zacchaeus. You will know that uh, I'm not going to repeat the whole story because you're so familiar with it. Uh, it says, then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything uh, from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And in response, Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. So that is going to be our uh, main focus today. Seek and save the lost. And you know that our text for today is taken from Luke uh, chapter 19 and verses 10. For the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. For the son of man is come to uh, seek and save that which was lost. You know, from our text today, there are four things that we are going to see in this one text, this one sentence. You know, this is a reply that Jesus is giving to, to, to Zacchaeus. Now, from, our from this text, uh, let us look at these four things that will comfort uh, the seeking sinners. The first one from this text that we are going to look at is, uh, you know, how the person is described for whom the son of man has come to seek and save. What is the condition of this man? The son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. That which was lost. Friends, there cannot be a case so bad as not to be comprehended by this word lost. And I'm unable to imagine the condition of any man or woman born so miserable as described by these four letters, lost. He may be you know, he may feel as if he was slipping into a pit. Sometimes we also feel that we are slowly slipping down, 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 down into a pit. But this word, it describes to the lowest depth of his misery. For he is lost. For the text speaks of that which was lost. Souls lost through sin are sought and saved by the Son of Man. Remember that Christ seeks the lost by taking the initiative. We must always be careful in how we take the meaning of this word lost. You know, in the New Testament, it does not mean damned or doomed. 
it simply means in the wrong place. A thing is lost when it has gone out of its own place into the wrong place. And when we find such a thing, we return it to the place it ought to occupy. Now, let me try to illustrate this. On June, on June 23rd, 2018, after their football practice, had ended. Now, when, when we're talking about football, <laughs> it's not the American football. <laughs> you know, they hold the ball in their hand and they run, but they call it football. <laughs> in all, most other countries, football is actually talking about soccer, soccer game. So these 12 boys uh, from the youth, local youth football team, you know, known as the wild boars, along with their coach, Aki. They raced through the rice paddies uh, on their bicycles uh, to, uh, to the Tham Luang Cave. This is in Thailand. The, La the Tham, Luang, Tham Luang Caves. Actually, their intent was to actually celebrate one of the boys' birthday. And so they went to this cave and they chained their bikes at the entrance of the cave to one of the, you know, the bars that was there. They chained their bikes and, uh, and they put their bags by the cave entrance. And in high spirits, they went into the cave with just torches. They didn't mean need much else, after all, because they were planning to be there just for an hour. You know, but during rainy season, the cave can get flooded up to five meters. Five meters, and that is, that's nearly 16 feet. And it was rainy season. Rainy season. And once the cave floods, it's risky even for experienced dive divers. It looks like the boys were caught off guard. Because when the boys had gone into the cave, it suddenly rained heavily. and they needed to get out. But all exit uh, passageways were already flooded. The, boy had no, the boys had no other choice except to scramble even deeper, deeper into the cave. You know, the wild boars, the wild boars eventually found themselves marooned on a small rocky shelf about four kilometers into the cave. Now four kilom kilometers is uh, 2.49 miles, 2.49 miles into the cave. Now swallowed by an unfolding mountain and surrounded by complete darkness, the boys and the coach lost all sense of time. You know, they had had to dig into the into that cave. You know, uh, they used rocks to dig about five meters deeper into that shelf to create a cavity where, th where they could huddle together and keep warm. You know, they had, uh, fortunately, they had some supply of drinking water 
in the form of moisture dripping from the cave walls. Fear, perhaps even terror, crept in. There was not much hope. They knew that they were going to die. The boys were lost. Death was at the door. Unless someone from outside came in search of them. But how would they find out where the boys were? Because it was all twisted passageways and all was filled with water. Friends, a man is lost when he has wandered away from God. And he is found when once he has taken his rightful place as an obedient child in the household and the family of his father. Chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, you know, it, uh, Jesus dealt in length with lost things. From verses 3 to 7, uh, it talks about the lost sheep. From verses 8 to 10, it talks about the lost coin. And the lost sons, verses 11 to 32. When they were found, there was great rejoicing. Now Jesus proclaims that his central mission is to seek and save the lost. Let us consider how men are lost. We know first that they are lost by nature. We are all lost even when we are born. And that the word lost has to do not only with those who have gone into sin grossly and wickedly. But even with all mankind, for Psalms, 30, Psalms 51 and verses 5, what does it say? Psalms 51 and verses 5, it says, Behold, I was born in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And then Romans 3 and verses 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Our sinful nature is inherited from Adam. It is Jesus Christ who came to earth and died for us. He alone is able to rescue sin-enslaved humanity. And that is the reason why he left heaven and came down to earth. We owe our salvation to our Lord Jesus. Second, we are lost by our own actions. We have erred and stirred away from God's, will, uh, God's ways willfully and wickedly by breaking God's laws. And now the word lost belongs to us by our own open acts. We are not only wanderers, but we have no will to come home. We are like prodigal sons, but we will never say, I will arise and go back to my father. We are like sheep which wander, but will never by any chance return unless the good shepherd shall seek us. Second, there is much consolation in, the, in, in our text for the guilty. If you notice how the savior 
has been described the son of man the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost as the son of man he is come when we hear our lord particularly and especially calling himself as by this name we are compelled to think of it as contrasted with his higher nature in choosing to be called the son of man when he might have been able to be called the son of god you know john described he declared uh, in the in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth not in flames of fire has jesus descended from heaven not in his chariot of wrath with the sword of vengeance does jesus come to men he is come upon an upon his errand of mercy as one who knows weakness and suffering and want as one who knows by personal experience the loneliness of our estate is it not joy to know that the son of god has come to save you as the son of man a man can sympathize with a man jesus the tender hearted one was full of sympathy and in loving gentleness he is come to save sinners third this is also full of comfort how our lord's past actions is described the son of man is come note it is not shall come but is come his coming is a fact accomplished you know we could not have said this before the days of bethlehem's wondrous birth at that time we should have had to say the son of man will come and then you would have had to you would have had to had extraordinary faith to believe that the son of god would become the son of man to save you but here he is come the greatest part of the work has been accomplished your salvation if you believe in jesus is comparatively an easy matter he has but to apply that which is already prepared the son of man is come colossians colossians 1 chapter 1 and verses 13 and 14 what does it say for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he he loves in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins romans 10 and verses 13 it says for everyone who calls on the name of the son of the son of god the lord 
will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And now let us go to our fourth point. You know, the Lord's mission, the Lord's mission, he is come to seek and save, to seek and save that which was lost. You know, the enterprise is one, but it has two branches. Here is a double work, seeking and saving, seeking and saving. Let us go back to our illustration about the 12 boys from the wild boars, you know, the football team who got lost in the cave. Friends, you know, the parents of these boys were worried. And the parent of the boy who had the birthday arranged a birthday party. The birthday cake and the presents were all set up. But the boy was missing. Somehow the parents, they got clue that the boys had gone to the cave. And so they went to the cave and on their arrival, they found their belongings at the entrance, which was all chained to some uh, iron bars. Immediately, a full-blown rescue operation was arranged. The Thai Navy SEALs, the National Police and other rescue teams, local volunteers all pitched in. And over the next few days, divers had to swim against strong currents and were often forced back by the rising waters, exploring the twisted depths of the cave was challenging. Thai Navy divers had stopped searching because water levels had risen to, to fill most caves. And the authorities, they say, we will uh, we will rethink strategy for finding boys, missing boys. The whole country was in prayer, especially in the schools where these boys were studying. And the parents of these boys spent most of their time at the entrance of the cave, hoping that their children would come back. Engineers desperately tried to pump water out of the caves. They even tried drilling uh, holes, uh, you know, through the mountains, desperate to find cracks into the cave system. The Thai Navy SEALs found a boy, a wild boar member, who happened to have skipped the cave expedition. And from him, they found out that he recalled a place in the complex they had visited before. And that was called the Patia Beach. Patia Beach was a place where these boys had you know, gone before. So with that in mind, they tried searching but it was too difficult. Finally, the Thai government placed a call. They called for help. Call for help was made all around the world. And the first international rescuers arrived on Thursday, June 28. Five days after the boys were lost. And these were the US 
air force rescue specialists and then there were cave divers from uk from Je Bel belgium from australia from scandinavia and from many other countries and on july 2nd july 2nd two british divers made an incredible discovery their names were john and rick you see john and rick had been braving through the narrow murky dirty passageways for several days and on monday the two men finally reached patia beach and they came up and searched but there was nothing they continued on onwards into the search into the darkness then a few hundred meters further they found an air pocket and they came up and soon the light from john's torch illuminated an electrifying sight this is 9 days after being in complete darkness the boys suddenly saw light and they were so happy they knew their rescue had come they were safe now they had some hope of being saved they emerged from the from their darkness coming down towards the ledge towards the john and rick and rick started counting the boys while john asked how many of you 13 13 came the reply in english the two divers spent some time with the boys trying to boost their morale then they left lights with the boys and promised to return later with food the boys had now been found but now comes the most difficult part rescuers set to work in figuring out how to extract 13 boys out most of them who couldn't swim from the winding flooded 4 kilometers uh, long stretch of caves that even experienced divers would struggle with they had to do something immediately they had to do something immediately because more heavy rains were predicted on the way and in spite of pumping water out continuously the water levels was not going down if they had to wait for water to subside they would have to wait for months and there was another serious problem the oxygen level dropped from 20 21% to 15% in the chamber somehow they were able to drink water because of the uh, drips of water from the walls now if the oxygen level went below 10% they would all be dead so there was no other option except to swim them out they had to somehow swim swim them up so cylinders were strapped to the front of each boy while the handle was attached to their backs 
and they were held face down to ensure water would run away from their faces. In the narrow sections, rescuers had to unstrap the air tanks in order to squeeze through while also pulling along the precious cargo. It was an astonishing feat. Tuesday, July 10th, after 18 days since the boys went missing, the last boy was finally out, safe and sound. Friends, I think we must look at this. In fact, there is a documentary film which is produced by NOVA. And I wish each one of us can have the privilege of seeing that. If you want, if you're interested in seeing that movie, uh, we could see it uh, this evening, uh, you know, uh, at sundown. But that is if you're interested. But it is an amazing uh, story of how uh, these 13 children, 12 children and their coach was uh, saved from this very uh, pathetic situation. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not come to propound some philosophy. He did not come to point your errors. He did not come to keep abreast of the times. He did not come to do the attractive things that many ministers are trying to do nowadays. He did not come to be an orator. He did not come to be popular. He did not, he did not come that he might gain the esteem of the multitudes. But he came to seek and save the lost. Christ seeks the lost personally and particularly. We don't know how Jesus knew the name of Zacchaeus, whether by divine omniscience or whether somebody told him. Look how the Lord served Zacchaeus. It seemed an odd thing that when the Lord was underneath that tree, he just looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. You, you see that verse five, Luke 19 and verses five. There is one small little word that we always forget. It says Zacchaeus, it does not say Zacchaeus, come down. It says, Zacchaeus, hurry, hurry and come down. It's not easy to hurry down out of a tree. But Jesus told him, hurry. And then in verses 6, chapter 19, Luke chapter 19 and verses 6, he says, and Zacchaeus hurried and came down. Now, I don't know if he jumped or whether he got scratched himself and uh, from the branches as he, as he climbed down, but he didn't waste any time. Sinners should respond to Christ's call quickly with joyful repentance. The Bible says, now is the day of salvation. Second Corinthians uh, 6 verses 2. It says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Hebrews 4, 7. You may not have tomorrow if you put off responding to Christ's call. Even if you get scratched up, hurry down from the tree and accept his invitation. There is a second part to this. 
whom Jesus seeks, he saves. To seek and save. And how is the saving done? That is done, first of all, by complete pardon of all your sins. The very instant that a man trusts Christ with all his heart, the past is blotted out as if it had never existed. All sins he has ever done in thought, in words, in deeds, however crimson in, uh, in thy, all go out at once. They are sunk into the depths of the sea, never to be found again. And this is done upon this one solitary condition. The man believes in Jesus Christ. First John 5 and verses 13, it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You must understand yourself. You must understand your need for a personal savior. The Bible is clear that we all have a huge problem called sin. Romans 3 and verses 23 it says, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This verse means that none of us are perfect. But here's the good news. God sent help. And the rest of Romans 6 and verses 23, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, in Romans 5 and verses 8, it says, God says that he commandeth, some translation says, demonstrates, he demonstrates, some tra translation says, he proves his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Finally, you must place your full trust in Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Romans 10 and verses 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now we do not preach that Christ forgives men and then lets them to live as before. But we assert that the moment he forgives and the moment he pardons of sin, he also gives a new nature too. And the last word, is this. Let us who are saved seek other lost ones. Jesus did it. The followers of Jesus do likewise. Is there any work that you could undertake amongst the worst of people? Undertake it. Never be ashamed of mingling with the poorest of the poor and the vilest of the wild, for Christ's sake. He came to restore back man into the image of God so that the original intent of his existence might be fulfilled. Christ saves the lost, not the found as a rich, important, and chief tax collector, he was an individual who was hated by the Jews and despised by the Romans and was quite possibly a man who had been a swindler or a thief. 
but Jesus took time to come to him, to call him, call to him and to open up for him the path of salvation. We dare not judge any person hopeless. Whether we are murderers or terrorists or racist or rapists, Christ seeks to save us all. Now you might be thinking, how do I know that Christ will save me in particular? Ask yourself this question. Do you see yourself as lost? Do you know that apart from God's grace, you would just spend eternity in hell? Do you recognize that if God left you to yourself, you would never seek him or believe in him? If so, then the good news is Jesus came to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1.15. He died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6. If the words lost, sinner, ungodly, if any of these words fit you, then you can have hope because Christ came to save such people from their sins. Now in closing, in closing, today, Christ is calling each one of you by name. If you accept his call, then he will pardon you and give you a new beginning. He will give you a new life. He will give you an, He will give you a new day. And in this new year, what else do you need? We don't know if we will even see another Sabbath. Let us give Lord, let us give our lives to God and let us hurry. Let us not wait for tomorrow may not be there. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, hurry, hurry and come down. Today, the Lord is asking each one of you, to hurry and give your lives to him. That is what we need for this new year. He will pardon you. He will accept you. And may that be our experience. May God bless each one of you um, as you spend this year. Let us dedicate ourselves to him.